I love the Boom Boom Boom. Been coming here for years and years. It's an amazing place. Always feels like home. I came down here to the Boom Boom Room and I found a place that's accepting of all sexualities. Just a very open, honest place. It was a place where I've been able to be open from a very young age and have a sense of community and family that I couldn't find anywhere else. I came down the street and heard loud music and went inside and all of a sudden I saw an incredible, positive, happy group of gays and lesbians and I basically rather conservative, quiet about it all at that point. All of a sudden found myself uh, in a piece of heaven. It's just a classic gay bar, you know? There's nowhere else really to go. I mean, the boom boom is the best. You guys want to uh, sign a petition to save the historic Coast Inn and Boom Boom The Boom was sold almost two years ago to the 83rd richest man in America. He and his wife plan to convert it from a gay bar that it's been for 60 years into a boutique hotel and a five-star restaurant. When I first heard that the Boom property had been sold and it was going to close, I was deeply saddened because it was a point of history that was seemingly to come to an end here in Laguna Beach. And I did not want that to happen. People said, you know, it's private property, the individual bought it, you can't tell them what to do with it. So you're gonna petition them to bitch the guy who sold it legally. I'm a firm believer in private property rights, but this is different, this is unique, this is a landmark. I knew that I did not want to have Laguna Beach lose its relationship with the gay community. You know, we're tired of getting shoved around. I'm angry. I'm tired of hiding and um, I'm fighting back. And uh, I think a lot of people feel that way. In gay U.S. history, there's still this perception that everything happened in New York or San Francisco. The story of Los Angeles and Southern California is finally being told in the last maybe seriously five years. So what counts as sacred spaces for gay people is still kind of under debate. The gay community in Laguna, I mean, you can go back in the history of Laguna, and, and I think Laguna's always had a gay community, going back even to the late 20s, early 30s, because it was an artistic town, and people were drawn to it, whether you be gay or straight. It's a central part of gay culture and gay history in this country. There's no other way to say it. So for a place like the Coast Inn and the Boom, these are the kinds of places where our history happened. This was before my time even, but the two gay bars in town, the Barefoot and Dante's, we're right here on Main Beach, and then the city bulldozed everything and then um, opened it up to a big public beach, and that's when the two gay bars kind of consolidated and moved and kind of took over the Boom Boom Room. I can remember when it was not called the Boom Boom Room. It was called the South Seas, and it had a wonderful bar with fish swimming in the top of the bar. There were probably two bars where the Marines at that time, with El Toro Marine Base being open, the Marines would go. They would go to the Sandpiper and they would go to the South Seas. It just became the Boom Boom Room because the South Seas was too long a name and it wasn't really hip and, you know, the music from the South Seas is boom, 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 and so it became the Boom Boom Room. This is really a finger into the ocean in Laguna and to have it as a gay pocket, a gay paradise, a little sort of a gay community was a nice feeling. The Boom is, is the center of it. The Boom Boom Room throughout the years has been a community center. It hasn't been just a bar. It brings an atmosphere, it brings style, it brings grace, it brings intellectual power to the city that no other place does. It's not about just going to the disco and having a couple of cocktails and getting laid. It's about having a safe space and a space that other people recognize as your space. By my calculation, it's been a gay bar for over 60 years, and by that, it is a landmark and the cornerstone of the gay life of Laguna. People will come from everywhere and, and hang out here, see each other here, and walk along the ocean edge at night, the silvery moon. I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful romantic setting here. 
when you couldn't do things in LA, you couldn't do things close to your professional life or your personal life, you could go down the coast just a little bit and experience a more laid back way of being yourself. The boom has been there as long as I can remember. There was no dancing at that time, but they did anyway. And the crowd was perfect model type because it was the thing to do here. My greatest memories was Rock Hudson. He came to Laguna so that he could um, relax, have a drink, and go to the bar. I've seen him a few times. He's a gentleman, uh, and a lot of celebrities. Because Laguna Canyon Road was space for two cars to come through. The five wasn't finished yet, and Laguna Canyon Road, the trees touched. And, and you had to know where to come here. Cut to 1982 83, you have the first openly gay mayor elected in the United States, Bob Gentry, in Laguna. In not necessarily the most um, liberal accepting part of the world, Orange County. I was in the Boom Boom Room several nights after my first election, and it was quite uh, uh, energizing for me because being the first openly gay elected official in Southern California, and the first openly gay mayor in the nation, I never realized what impact that had to those who weren't in those offices, who hadn't sought any positions of leadership, who were just law-abiding, honest, hard-working citizens, saw me as opening a door for them that gave them some credence, some validation, and a new role in society. Coming into visibility is such an important part of contemporary gay culture. Even in 2008, it's not an easy thing to do. It's kind of sad, but there's not a lot of gay history. There's not a lot of records of our past. In looking at gay history and talking to some of the archivists, we don't have a lot of history. We're a very unique civil rights movement. If you think about other civil rights movements, you know, the birthplace of Martin Luther King in Atlanta, Ebenezer Baptist Church, these are parallel situations. They are both recognitions that when like people congregate, important things happen. Communities get formed, agendas get recognized, all kinds of other unexpected consequences occur. The clubs and bars become part of our history and they become much more significant. This is the Boom Boom Room sign out wall. This is where everybody that leaves signs out and says their last goodbye to the boom before they uh, go on with their new life. As I've been told by a lot of the former employees who worked here, a lot of these people who've signed this wall have passed away. And so it's become kind of a hallowed wall because it's, uh, it has a great meaning and significance to so many people who've died, particularly from AIDS over the years. That, uh, it's got kind of a spiritual quality to it. We lost a substantial amount of our people. People who lived here and had a wonderful time here, and bingo, the next minute they were gone. The Garden of Peace and Love sits in front of a beach right outside the Boom Boom Room. And it's where a lot of people who died in the AIDS crisis had their remains scattered. I know many people in that period that came here, including my partner, for the last time. And in that goodbye, uh, many of the local people put their ashes here. So it's a deep historic root of pain and suffering and also in a dignified, uh, God majestic uh, cemetery setting. It doesn't get better than that. We as a community have learned and grown from that horrible disease and its horrible attack on Laguna Beach. So that memorial must stay there. And any elected appointed official who ever suggests that that memorial go away will have to deal with Bob Gentry, even if I come in a walker and a wheelchair, because it is so important to the lifeblood of this city and to its residents. One of my overriding fears is if this property is developed and turned into just another boutique hotel, that'll really jeopardize the Garden of Peace and Love, and I'm afraid that that might not survive. For me, it's like the name's quilt. It's a kind of physical memorial to people whose lives are gone, you know, who've, who've disappeared. And just plain out capitalism is no longer the only stake at play. There's a great peace. I mean, how can you not be at peace when you're right here?
raising awareness and then collecting supporters. And what specific action do we want the council to take? You know, it's what we're trying to say on the petition, which is, you know, would you help create this public-private partnership with the developer, the gay community, okay. the city, in order to come up with some kind of compromise? Our appeal is to the city council because they have the ability to come up with that solution, uh, to keep it a gay club, because it is so much uh, part of Laguna. It's private property. Uh, city council is not allowed to get involved in private property issues. We can't even set rents for commercial, so there's nothing city council itself could do. It has to be somebody that wants it to stay that way and has the money to do it. I spent 27 years working in politics, and I learned two very important lessons. One, never give up, and two, the shotgun approach. Throw everything out there and something then will stick. Fred came up with the idea of getting the petitions signed. His goal was 5,000 petitions signed by people all over Laguna. Let's go out there and get some of these petitions signed. We didn't have a lot of options, but like General Dwight Eisenhower said, public opinion wins wars. So we decided to get the public on our side. Whoa, look at the crowd. We kicked the thing off June 1st. I've never seen anything kind of catapult like this. It's been tremendous. I'm about to turn 21, and I would like to have a place to go when I turn 21, and I'm a local here, I grew up around here, and, and so, you know, I think we're gonna lose a lot if we lost the boom. I'm gonna be around for another 50 years, you know? Gotta keep it going. Hey, have you signed a petition to save the boom boom room yet? Everyone's getting involved, and you know, the communities, even the straight community's kinda like getting involved with it. The buzz is getting bigger, so. The word has spread, because people talk to each other here. The straight people, the gay people, everyone's, you know, that, the actual locals that have been here for a long time are very close. The communities come together and it's just happening and it's, you know, I'm doing a little bit of push but it's mostly just taking on a life of its own. I honestly think there's a good chance of saving it and even if we don't, we let the city know that there's a very strong gay interest in the area. Maybe that'll do half the job and, and you know, set anchors for whatever comes next. Save the boom. <laughs> You know, Laguna Beach was originally an artist community and a lot of homosexuals moved into the area. The growth of Laguna itself had a lot to do with the early pioneers who were gay people. Like there is in West Hollywood, as there is in DuPont Circle in Washington, D.C. Like the Castro in San Francisco and, you know, the East Village in New York. It's kind of funny to say this, but once the gays have moved in and made everything beautiful and nice, a lot of money has followed that. And with that money has come sort of the shutting down of the free-thinking ideal and the open-mindedness of the community. There she is trying to save her. Boom Cafe, we're gonna keep you open, Boom. I mean, I think the Boom Boom Room is like historical to us, especially in our community. It's been around forever. I mean, we've been for years now, and some of these people have been for decades. We're gonna fill these bad boys up. Is that save the Boom? Yeah, save you want the to Boom. Sign? Hell yeah, I was gonna go down there and sign. Oh, you've heard of it, huh? I'm a pissed off about the whole situation. Would you guys like to sign a petition to save the historic coast Inn in the Boom Boom Room? Save the Boom Boom Room? Yeah. Y'all see in your room, you room, room, what the yeah, hell? Thank you. Right I appreciate it. One thing I do definitely want to do and I'm going to stick to is that we're going to get these signatures in Laguna Beach. I've had offers, you know, to go to different gay prides around the country and get them. And, and um, I mean, nothing against those signatures, but I want to be able to say to people here that they've all been gathered in Laguna. Another satisfied customer. They're trying to tear it down. Oh, so no way. That's just raw. Gosh, do I have stories for that? <laughs> really? Like what? Can't go there. <laughs> this cause is an abomination to God. I gotta tell you. Are, are you from Laguna? Yes. How long have you lived here? 30 years. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. It's interesting. It's bringing out. No, I knew, I, I knew when he said, can I say something? Because he wouldn't sign it when yeah, he came he in. Wouldn't. And I knew he was a negative one. I knew it wasn't going to be good. Good, you got all sides of it here. Normally bars have always kind of been in the back alleys and never discussed and Laguna is unique because it's supported this place for, you know, 60 years, but um, there's still a lot of people who haven't and are a little uneasy about it. I had a woman tell me I was going to burn in hell and this stuff like that, but you know, when you're talking to hundreds of people, you're, you're going to come across that no matter what you're asking for, or, you know, presenting to someone. I worked in the restroom in front of the building. 
for three and a half years, 1977 to 81. Uh, people were lined up out the door and had the best breakfast in town. I came right from North Dakota and it was uh, an awakening. I can't say it was a rude awakening. I can say it was an awakening to what life was other than what Fargo, North Dakota had. <laughs> Excuse me. It was always up, alive, and uh, freedom. That's what I can say is freedom. There's still a lot of hatred and misunderstanding and lack of understanding. You know, it's hard, and um, it hurts me that people are subjected to this. I mean, I'm older, bigger, more mature, I can do it. It still bothers me, but it really bothers me when it's, this, this hatred is thrown at younger people. Well, like, how does something like that upset people so much? They don't understand. Religion. Number one culprit. Well, we got the whole round to do. While the petition drive is very important, our visibility around town is even more important. What we've done is um, taking petitions out with clipboards and pens and a little information on the effort. All the retailers in town, anybody who will put up a petition and a sign, uh, we're going to go call on. And so we got a little database of where the signs are, and then his mission is to go out and put more petitions and signs around in places particularly where Lagunans frequent. We've lost our village atmosphere enough is enough help us. <laughs> That's a nightmare because it's going to be another big hotel, more traffic, um, more taxes for the city. Let's keep Laguna culture alive. <laughs> exactly. yes. Diversity is everything, right? I think but Laguna is big enough for all kinds of people. And that's one of the reasons we moved here is because it had all kinds of people and it wasn't generic or like a Vine or Newport. I have not counted since the thousand figure, and we were hoping to get a thousand over last weekend. I think we did over the Fourth of July weekend, rather. Um, I think we're probably over 2,000 now. You know, in five weeks is pretty amazing. What's the record for signatures thus far? I think our civil rights movement, from the gay community's point of view, and our political movement, from the local point of view, has really um, got a lot of legs. We've been a little kind of a sleeping giant for too many years now. We used to be under Bob Gentry's leadership in the 80s and 90s. Uh, almost ruled Laguna, um, but it's been a little quieter lately. People are a little more apathetic, but um, that's changing and I'm seeing it. I'm Fred Carger. I'm near, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Are you here for the demonstration? Or see what's going on? No, I'm, wor I'm working for a bank. Just wonder, what do you guys do? Oh, we're trying to save uh, this historic gay bar in Laguna Beach. It's called the Boom Boom Room. It's been there for 61 years, and the owner works in that building, but his boss runs this company, AIG. So we're appealing to Martin Sullivan, who's the uh, CEO of AIG. We started our winter offensive first week in February to try and put some pressure on Mr. Udvar Hazi, the new owner of the building. 61 years. Huh? Yeah. Good luck to you guys. Hey, thanks very much. Yeah, you want to yeah. try and get Here, take yeah. a boom banana. Yeah, the owner of the property. Hey, everybody. Let's all get together. We're going to have a quick meeting right over here by the stoplight. We did it on a Tuesday lunch hour, and we had 40 people that came up from Laguna. This is so awesome. It's, um, it's showing support for something that a lot of people believe in. And we're glad that it's happening and we'll get the boom back. I'm here to help Fred uh, play the bagpipes and really drum up some support to save the boom bar. It's a good cause, I think, yeah. And I came all the way from Chicago just to support Fred and save the boom boom room. First off, thank you so much for coming. Um, you're doing a great deed to save some history in Laguna Beach that we've been fighting for for a couple years. Got a couple goals here today. One, I want to you know make a lot of noise. Oh yeah, baby. We're appealing to AIG, which is American International Group. We're asking the chairman of that company to help us because one of his division heads is actually over in that office is the guy who owns the boom, Stephen Udvarhazy. You know, I know he's had some buyer's remorse because he um, 
he put it up for sale. So we're trying to appeal to him to maybe lower the price or donate it. We want to keep this upbeat and fun. I promise the LAPD and the building security is going to be the friendliest, most upbeat demonstration in the history of Los Angeles. We had a bagpiper, Lauren Cousins, who had performed with Madonna. Pretty extensive television coverage. Mr. Sullivan, if you're out there, please help us save our landmark bar in Laguna Beach. And as a part of that strategy, we bombarded his office with over 1,500 postcards. Hey, Udmar Hazy, save our bar. Save the boo, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go. A little parade here. We marched right through Century City. until we got thrown out by security. Yeah, near private property, you guys tell me to do that over here. But it was just a very gratifying, exciting, moving day as this whole campaign has been. We decided to take our message one step further. Save the boom, George and Brad! Save the boom, George and Brad! When Mr. Udvahazi bought the property, it was widely reported that his partners of this were Brad Pitt and George Clooney. So we took the appeal directly to them. We took an ad out, Variety, and then we had a demonstration in front of their Ocean's 13 premiere and their hand and footprint signing at Drummond's Chinese. Hi, George! It's all part of our message to find a buyer for this landmark. And then there was the calendar contest. We decided to showcase one of Laguna Beach's great natural resources. It's good looking men. Excuse me, are you guys from Laguna? Hi, we're doing an open casting for models next Saturday. It's the men of Laguna Beach calendar. It's open call next Saturday. We're trying to um, raise some money and awareness uh, for our Save the Boom efforts. Go Laguna Beach calendar. So we're come up with the idea to have a open casting looking for the 20 hottest men in Laguna Beach. Hey, like that. That. We have two judges that are casting directors for Janice Dickinson modeling show and then Heather Tom and Nicole Tom, both hot actresses. We're going to kick ass. It's a $500 prize too for the winner. You're not what? This says gay heritage, I'm not. I know, but you don't need to be gay to be in the killing bro. No worries. That was pretty funny. He goes, I'm not gay, man. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, this is gay heritage. I don't want anything to do with that. Win some, lose some. Hey, real quick, there's a model search next Saturday. Model search next week. Yo, yo, you can be the lifeguard on the calendar. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, cool. You have any good looking policemen here? A couple. I'll post in the briefing room. Okay. Good luck. All right, great. Signing up, the excitement's building. Save the boom. We're going to pick the top 20 contestants today. Of the top 20, the 12 will make the calendar. You guys are terrific for doing this. It's really appreciated. So just to make your jobs a little easier, we've got these forms for all of you. And every contestant gets a number, and they'll all come up in order, introduce themselves, and then each of you judges to ask them a question. I don't know, just see where it goes. She's final set. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Happiness, success, future. Very simply, how the contest works. The judges are going to pick 20 finalists who will then have their photos taken. And then when it's narrowed down to the final 12, the winner will get $500. $500. I'll give another $500. All right, $1,000 for Peter Montgomery to the winner. So let's get underway. This has been a very exciting and moving experience for me, this whole Save the Boom campaign. I'm doing it for younger people. I want generations long beyond me to be able to enjoy Laguna Beach as many generations ahead of me have. And 
so to see younger people that have come forward and helped in a whole variety of ways on this campaign, gay and straight, just very, very gratifying. When they rolled into city council that night to present their petitions, I was aware that it was a, a very large thing to a majority of the gay community to keep it. Fred was ingenious with his wheelbarrow. They had multiple copies made, and they were just stacked up in this wheelbarrow, and just looked like this overwhelming thing, and it, it really made an impression. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the oh, February 13, 2007 meeting of the Urban Beach City Council. Oh. Anyone in the audience who has something that is not appearing on tonight's agenda uh, can speak for three minutes. To the Mayor and City Council of Laguna Beach, we the undersigned hereby express our strong opposition to the possible closure of the historic Boom Boom Room in Coast Inn. We respectfully request that you as elected leaders of the city do everything in your power to help preserve the tolerance, compassion, and acceptance that Laguna Beach has always shown the gay community. We kicked off our campaign to save the boom on Memorial Weekend of last year with a petition drive, and we'd like to present you now with the result of that petition drive. We ended up collecting over the next three months 5,955 signatures, so we exceeded our goal. We've had quite a year and remain hopeful that he will keep the historic Coast Inn and Boom Boom Room as primarily gay establishments forever. Thank you very much. I guess I have probably the most history with Coast Inn. Um, I worked there for my father when Pappy Smith owned it. Uh, when I was 11 years old. So I hope that we can keep that diversity in Laguna. Um, my little brother's from the gay community, and uh, I'd like to see us work together, whether it be this place or another place, that uh, we keep that diversity in this community that we've always had it since the 20s. Thank you. You're also good looking. <laughs> I hope there is something that we can do to help. Shoot, if there's something that we can do that's you know that's legally possible, I, I would love, I would love to see us do it. I would love, to, I would love to help you any way that we can. I don't like the word tolerance. I think tolerance implies putting up with something that you don't especially care about. I don't like the word embrace, and I think we're going to be embraces diversity. And we care very much about keeping our community diverse. And if the boom turns into something else, I suggest you anoint another restaurant and call it your own and just make it happen. <laughs> just very, very pleased with the turnout, the tremendous positive comments from the mayor and the city council. Um, all voice, strong support for our efforts, and that was our message. We are trying to get them to help us, and, and they all responded, all five of them, in an incredibly positive way. You know, closing a place like the Boom is different from closing a Starbucks. You can't just reestablish it somewhere else. Its identity has emerged over the process of its entire history through the people who've gone there, the people who've worked there, the people who have found love, found lust, had their hearts broken, found acceptance. Those are the things that create a place. It's the sense of memory, it's a sense of community, it's a sense of family. And this is 89.3 KPCC. An iconic Orange County gay nightclub is throwing one final shindig before its doors close for the last time early tomorrow morning. Susan Vallett has more on the final curtain for the Boom Boom Room in Laguna Beach. Well, it's in many ways just another great Labor Day weekend in Laguna. It also is the closing weekend of the Boom Boom Room. Personally, it's sad for me because I've given a lot of the last year and a half of my life to uh, preserving this.
We're off to the boom to have some fun and talk about old times and new. <laughs> John and I met here seven years ago. We came back here from Salt Lake City just for this weekend, just to say goodbye. We met Valentine's Day Boom 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 2003 and been here ever since. How long have you been coming to the Boom? Oh, off and on since 1977. It was a very different kind of time back then. Anybody could afford to live here, so there were a lot of young guys, and today you can't afford it. It's too high end. It's 20s and 30s, they can't afford it, so they can't support the scene. I've been coming here for over 20 years, yeah. It's been fun, the Boom Boom Room, when I was young, being dragged in off the street, just, you know, every holiday weekend, it's such a big party, and so we're here to close it down. Ladies and gentlemen, raise your glasses to the boom. Thank you for everything. Quite a night, very emotional um, and uplifting. And our message is we're closing, but we're looking for a gay buyer. The place is for sale, and we're going to continue that message till it's we take it back. It's the law. It's been a year later, the boom's closed, which is really sad. It's still sitting just above us, vacant. The gay life is hurting. And this is kind of like our anniversary present to it. We're planting the alyssum, and it's brightening the whole area. Michelle, who usually tends to the garden, has gotten very sick, unfortunately. While he is getting better, we are bringing it back to life. Because if we don't do something with this garden, the city's going to take it. And this is actually a burial site. This is sacred ground. A lot of people are here. A lot of good people. And it's looking really good, and now we have a second cleanup in November. Even though the boom is closed, this represents a continuation of everything that it stood for. It's about the heart of a community, and now we're trying to bring the whole heart together. Personally, what it means to me is not only hope, but something a lot more than that. It means the future. It makes me happy to feel that I can come back here, and it won't be something that'll be lost. It's very emotional, inspirational, very gratifying. Iceberg roses. I think that the community coming together to garden is almost like they're cultivating the gay and lesbian community for the future. 